What's going on everyone? Welcome back to YGOPD, your, your professional development. Sorry if things sound a little weird, uh, face cam's not there. I had a blowout, I guess, on one of my USB ports. Things were kind of acting up. Um, I found a way to re-record the video on Friday, but that was like a temporary solution, and I'm still kind of operating under a temporary solution, so the audio didn't get picked up by my mic, and it was just blank the whole time. Um, so that's why there was no upload yesterday, but um, I wanted to redo this and try to get this set and edited and out. Um, on the uh, temporary solution, but this is pearly. I've tested this a lot. I really like this deck I picked it up before the like delicious limit and even I think before sleepy was out back then and uh, Like like the limit happened and I got rid of it and I was just like this deck is dead And then I never touched it again until recently because of obviously like everyone else the rarity collection reprints And it's really good. It's a lot better than what I thought It's still a very high ceiling deck in terms of reward for skill play um, and good technical play and I really like that as a deck you can kind of pivot to that's budget or if you need a break from something in the format that you've been trying to grind with but still want to keep like your your mind sharp or, and switching to like something that's not like just super casual but still is very competitive I think this is the deck I think this is what you switch to especially if you're looking for a budget deck this is really it outside of like depending on how much you want to spend on certain staples for the main or extra you can make this very affordable so I'll go ahead and stop talking and hop right into it Okay, for the uh, main deck, we're at 41. Starting off, we have two Pearly and two Perlily, one of, or two of each of the Light Cat and the Dark Cat. Some people play uh, three of this. Um, I think that's fine. I just have gotten used to two and two. Ironically, when I tested this um, a few weeks ago, I forgot to put in one of these, so I was just playing one and two of the Black Cat, and I was just like, man, I'm not seeing names as much as I would like. And I was like, oh, well, that's why. Um, but the deck is really fun. It helps a lot with resource management. It helps a lot with good technical play. Um, if you're looking for a very cheap deck to compete, but also improve yourself as a player, I think this this deck really does that. So um, the rest of the Pearly engine, I think, is about as standard as it gets. Uh, three street, no terraforming, and then three of the My Friend for consistency. And then the spells are about as straightforward as you can get. Three of the ones that you can. So three pretty and three happy. Pretty letting you get to the negate and happy helping you with the OTK lines. Um, and then obviously the two and two, of course, of both sleepy and delicious. I um, This does way more than what I thought, this being at two. Um, I've not touched it in a long time. But just having the consistency of at least four of these, like to always, even if you open one, hit one off of the my friend is really powerful and i think really really solid so it's been really really good i like i like it a lot um and then of course the one yeep so there are 21 pearly engine cards i believe and then uh just 20 non-engine uh you could cut a couple things to make the deck 40 but uh three prosperity this is probably one of the more expensive cards i mean it has the rarity collection reprints as the supers and things but i'm assuming over time those maybe have creeped up a few bucks maybe five bucks a piece but um and then i'm not sure what cross outs are at but again these just got reprinted in the second rarity collection so it's quite affordable i've been a big fan of cross outs since i started doing more testing and played at indie that if you just play enough hand traps this card is actually amazing um it just is called by truly for any card which feels really really cool and then target wise um three ash this is just the one i elected to play at three that i want to see the most and then one ofs, we have Mourner, Valor, Ogre, Droll, Imperm, and I guess Talents technically too. There's a couple other cards in here. You could consider these, um, Droplet and uh, Called By. Uh, this is very, list is very similar to I think what uh, Dinka Fawn was playing maybe a few months back. I wanted a good place to start. Um, and so far it's felt good. I've seen his new list. I'm sure people have already seen that with Black Goat and things like that. I just never draw that card. My luck is always better with board breakers, so I still elected to keep into Dark Ruler. Again, his concept that I kind of agree with is, is cards that trade really well, especially in a deck where you're forced to discard, even though it's for effect, not cost. You're always paying two cards to make an action happen. So um, you want cards that really trade really, really well, and that's this. And then Again, rivalry, any deck that I think can still afford to main deck floodgates like this, skill drain, whatever, um, it's good. Like, it helps break boards going second. It lets them not play if you go first. It's just overall pretty solid. So, uh, 41 cards there, as I said. And then for the extra deck, it's pretty straightforward. I just realized it's not in order from when I tried to do this yesterday. So, I'll set out stuff as I go. Uh, for the Xyz, it's about as standard as you can get. Two of the big noir, of course. You do need two. There are some combos where you make two, and there's uh, times where you just go through a second one. 
uh, two beauty for the negate again, and then two happy, which is pretty straightforward. And then uh, two plump. Plump is still like my favorite card. I love the fact that you can make this more often. Um, I don't know how I explained it when I tried to record it for the first time, but this card just feels really good when you summon it because it's just like you know you're gonna get to a five material noir naturally and just have that towers like it just feels very oppressive like to summon that like anytime I'm, i have the ability to summon this and then attach like i just feel like i'm in a winning position it's just really nice to summon this more consistently so and then the uh, last one is the uh one uh regular noir i've thought about more but it doesn't get ripped that often with cash and engines and things like that but um I do think about it a lot, but one for now is okay. Um, and then the extra, the rest of it is just a lot of generic toolboxy cards. Uh, Zeus and Typhon are a little up there. I think Typhon might be more than Zeus. I could be wrong. I haven't checked the prices on that in quite a while, but um, I think both of these are still needed in this deck at one, and it's not a terrible investment by any means. Uh, of course, the one downer and the one Nightingale to go with the Zeus. The one Fuko, um, right now for just 10 pie format, you play level ones. There's no reason not to take the free turn, I think, if you can afford it. And then uh, one SP, this could be anything else. I just had a spare slot. I have SP, but again, if you don't have it, you don't need to run it. it could be Cerberus, could be Phoenix, could be an access code, could be an underworld goddess, could be a relinquished anima, even is probably maybe more of a correct pick there too. Um, but it could just be truly anything. I just have it here. But if you cut the SP, the deck is extremely affordable. So that's it. That's Pearly. Um, quick quick and easy one today. Trying to catch back up on recording a little bit. But 41 card deck. If you need something that's budget friendly that you want to test that is really going to improve your skills or just look for a different area to improve in, this deck really stretches you. So I think it's really cool. But yeah, well, that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.